do right now real quick I'm gonna remove these because that's what I'm gonna to roast today these are my lemon broil steaks like I said we're gonna marinate these so I'm gonna put these in a bag now I'm gonna freeze them and use them later um, and I'm gonna put the marinade right into the bag so get the marinade open. so this is just a, a teriyaki um, very spicy teriyaki but I'm just gonna actually let that let that marinate in the bag. So take my gloves off real quick. You want to get the air out of the bag as much as you possibly can. And kind of like shake and bake. I'm just gonna make sure that these get covered. Now you can let them sit in the in the refrigerator for 24 hours, or you can freeze them, pull them out. Let them defrost, and then that marinade is just going to get sucked up into those steaks. So that is going to be part one. Um, part two, I'm not going to worry about a glove right now. I'm going to cut these. These are going to be my, my stew meat. That's pretty good size. Um, kind of want to have them all pretty much even. We're going to braise. You can put them on, on a smoker. You can char them on a grill, and then cook them in a liquid. Um, I like to... Cook them with the veggies while I'm cooking other stuff on the grill. That's me personally, but you know, if it's a cold rainy day, you want to cook inside, cook inside. Uh, just do it in a stew pot. Um, what I braising is a two-tier method. So you take these and you get a really hot uh, cast iron or, or a pan, season them, sear them, uh, and then you want to deglaze it with maybe a little bit of wine. And then um, you, the braising part is. The searing part and then you're going to add them to liquid and you're going to slow cook them so you can put them in an oven you can put them in a smoker uh, offset grill whatever your uh, fancy is so again I'm going to try to get as much air out of these bags as possible so I don't have any air gaps in there and there's no frost buildup and I could put those away for right now so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pound out these cube steaks that I talked about before so line these guys up um, you know this is a, a really good technique for uh, pork you can do it with chicken if you want to just um, you know pound things out get bigger steaks uh, if you want to do chicken fried steak this is a great steak for that so bread it and and fry it once it's pounded out a lot of different applications for it um, and I have enough here that I can definitely use it in a bunch of different things. Uh, let me see, get a little plastic wrap. Cover that over. And then I'm gonna get my hammer over here. And when I pound them, I kind of, I'm not just slamming it down, I'm actually if you see, I'm kind of going almost like a, this is obviously, you know, a little bit of an exaggeration of the motion, but I want to kind of, same thing with chicken. If you, if you pound directly on the meat, it can shatter the, uh, the texture, the texture of the meat will shatter and it'll split and it turns to mush. In fact, I could probably show you if I just pound on that, see how that is all shattered now and it's not really a usable piece of meat so you want to kind of be gentle I know you get to work with a hammer be gentle and kind of move it into the direction you want this actually can help you shape it too if you want to have you know a longer shape or a wider shape the way you pound it and tenderize it is the way it's going to end up Like I said, same thing, chicken cutlets. If you want to do pork. And you can feel it for thickness. This is still a little thick right here. So that one piece that I pull it back now, you can see it's really mushed down, but still usable. 
Real simple, that's it. Uh, again, I'm going to, if you have butcher paper or if you have uh, parchment paper and you can kind of stack that in between, like when you see burgers that are frozen, it'll help them from sticking together. Um, I'll probably do this in, in two different bags. So I'll start one bag. What I'll do is layer this flat in the bag. If you want to do steak and cheese, you can take these now that they're pounded out, cut them into strips and cook it up that way if you want to instead of having it as, as little steaks. But like I said, chicken fried steak, if you want to do steak and eggs, um, this all works out really well. last a while in your freezer too. Make sure you get the air out. You get over the course of like you know a month you can have steak dinners and meals multiples over the course of a month for, for a little money. And if you have a cryovac machine even better. But not everybody does so Zip it up. And that's it. A bunch of different meals for little money. These I'm going to come back to. We're going to cook those in other videos. Great thing about having multiple things. I'm going to season up these roasts. Keep it real simple. Just some kosher salt, pepper. Uh, you can use whatever you want. If you have a seasoning blend you like, if you want to have more of barbecue, um, this is my personal preference for my family and what, how they eat. But um, I do love a, a nice spicy seasoning rub on my on my meat too. Um, so this is going to get right on to the to the smoker. And it's probably going to take a few hours. We're going to get to an internal temp of uh, probably 125 and let it rest. I want it to be a medium rare, medium to medium rare in the center. Um, the smoker has some probes, which is good for, for me to kind of tell me where we're at temperature wise. Um, I always, it may look like I'm putting a lot of salt and pepper. Keep in mind when you put something on you know, ever put it on a grill or a smoker or a griddle, a lot of it's going to burn off um, as soon as it touches down. So, um, you know, I'm going to take this out and get it going.